and we've been sitting here laughing already and giggling, so you're going to have to forgive us because that's kind of what this will be yep. uh, from time to time. So if you guys don't know Rachel, Rachel is one of my favorite people. You on the might planet. not recognize me. I don't have many ears on this week. Well, there we go. So we have I am Rachel. I just don't have them on. <laughs> face recognition moment here. Um, but Rachel is one of my favorite people on the face of the planet, and we always uh, find the opportunity to have a good laugh a good belly laugh. And so this is a new segment that we've only done one before this. Yeah. This is our second flight. Woo. And you may not, there's many things to know about Rachel, uh, but one of the things about her is that she's a maker. That's the yes. phrase to use, right? That's what I use. Some people say they're a crafter or I say I'm a maker because crafting, I, I don't know why, I just like it better because I make all the kinds, all the things. All the things. If I see something and, and I'm like, oh, that's a cool plate, I'm going to figure out how to whittle it out of glass pieces I, at and 3 o'clock in the morning. It's, it's with, true. With, with found glass yes, pieces yes. from beach glass. That is true. Sea, sea glass yes, is what they yes, call it, right? Yes. No, she will do that. Uh, she's very clever, very creative, and amazing. And so we love that about her, but she's also somebody who enjoys life to the fullest, um, that you find joy in almost all things. Everything. So I love that about and you're Or when we were on Molokai last year for Christmas and they had put joy up in their window, they put the J backwards, so we found Loy. Loy, all right. We had Loy. Loy, <laughs> much, much, much Loy. And one of the things that you love are the holidays. Yes, I mean, I don't know if you can, you probably can't see it, but I have Christmas Crocs on. It's November 1st to me is the first day of Christmas, okay? I am thankful. I love Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for Christmas. And I'll celebrate Christmas up till that week of Thanksgiving, and I'm like, okay, turkey, you know. Christmas to me, it's, a, it's my jam. It's, it's my favorite. Time. I it's love the, it it's so much. It's the most much. wonderful time of the year. It brings me all the joy. So, uh, in fact, you've been posting videos yes. uh, that are hilarious. If you don't follow her, you should. Where should they follow you? Um, I am on, um, Instagram. My personal Instagram is, uh, Disney bird cause Disney and bird. And then, um, on, um, uh, small kitchen, big flavor is the, um, site, the Instagram that I have for food. And then I also have some imagination creations. Um, and that's for the things that I make, like shirts and hats and crafts and yeah. all the little fun things that I like to make. So I have Disney Bird is my just my daily life. Um, and then some imagination creations is the things that I like to make and create for people. Some people will say, hey, I'm having a party. Can you help me theme it? And I'm like, sure. I might know someone who did that. I, I know too. <laughs> and then um, Small Kitchen Big Flavor is definitely my um, food one. And actually, both of the things that we're going to make here today mm -hmm. are on uh, Small Kitchen Big Flavor. And there we go. So tell us what, because we're going to be doing it while you guys are watching and yes. while we're talking. Because, yes. you know, I think one of my favorite things is when you get together with some of your good girlfriends and you're doing something, like it used to be that people would be in the kitchen and preparing a meal together and the, the mom and the aunts and the, you know, right. would be in there and you'd be having the conversation. Um, I love it when we get together and we have something to do yeah. instead of just sit there. Because right. I have to have something yeah, going same. on. So what are we going to be doing today? Ms. So Rachel? we are going to be doing two different things. We're doing something Thanksgiving-y and be. something Christmassy. Yeah. So the Thanksgiving-y is Shannon is going to make a turkey out of vegetables. So she's going to take a bunch of celery and endive or endive and um, all kinds of cucumbers and tomatoes, and she's going to make a turkey. And I'm going to take other um, things, you know, char charcuteries. Or I know I just started seeing, have you seen the butterboards? No. Okay, so they have these things now where you take a board and you smear, you smear butter on them. Um, some people do butter on the whole thing with a little bit of salt and pepper and rosemary. I've seen now dessert ones where they do Nutella with stuff, and then you take bread and you like uh, into oh. it. I'd never seen that, and okay. I thought that was whoa. Uh -huh. Okay, so they have all different, bar all right. but like I'm still a charcuterie girl. I have yet to do a butter board, um, but I'm gonna do a. Christmas themed mini charcuterie. Okay. Um, that's what um, I'm going to do. So I have pre bagged everything for Shannon, cut the vegetables, got it all ready. She has a picture of what it's supposed to look like. I do. Um, if you need direction, I'm here. I, I will. And, and you, one of the things, I mean, she's done what you could do for your kids to make it super easy because there are many different phases of this, but last night you cut up all the vegetables. Mm -hmm. 
But then she numbered, I don't know if you can see there's a number two on this to tell me that this is the thing that I will open second to right. put on the tray. And you could do this with your kiddos yeah. so that you could do all the prep because I think sometimes we get overwhelmed. It's we like do. let's take the kids into the kitchen and have them make and, and then wonderful... you're trying to cut. Right. And then it's knife skills and fork skills and yeah. I even tried using the pumpkin, you know those kid safe pumpkin carvers to do vegetables yeah. and he it was just too much right. and then I I got one of those things that you hold down the vegetables so he could try to do it. Then he's trying to do it with a butter knife and so Sometimes it's a lot, and then yeah. you're trying to manage it all. So for me, this was a very big thing, and I actually even did this with my son, Kobe, when he was old enough to start microwaving his own food. I would make things, or if I was at, I was at work and he was at home, I would make meals and put them in um, little glass containers, and on the lid, I would take um, the surgical tape or the medical tape right. um, that comes off, and you could do painter's tape too, and I would put it on the top and I'd say, microwave for three minutes without lid on and he was able to do that and that was one of the little independents i would just have him come and i'd say push the start button push the start button then it would be like now you put it in but make sure the lid's off and every every single time i still do this there's not a fork in it he's like mom there's never been a fork in it but i'm always like you didn't put a spoon there's no metal he's like no mom is the right. lid on it no so but I would write that just, I forget sometimes. I mean, yes. I've never microwaved a fork, but you know. Yeah, um, I have. I hope so. you see. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. It's fireworks, 4th oh. of July. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so these are the kinds of things that you can do is, even with a craft or something that you're making for the holidays, you can pre-bag things. You know, maybe when you're watching TV at night or you're doing something, or if you, if you have downtime, I know a lot of us don't, but like, you can pre-do some of these things, pre-bag them, put them together for Christmas stuff. You could do a wreath with your kids. Yeah. And as you get it, you just put it, so it's like, okay, where's the number one? Because then it's also numbers, yeah. or you can maybe spell a word, or have each kid have their own bag, or individual, or whoever wants to do it. It just makes it easier. You yes. Can, you can keep a handle on things so that it doesn't become overwhelming for you, and it doesn't become overwhelming for the kiddos, right. and then you ultimately get yep. to success. So we're gonna go ahead and start. Okay. And, and tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing. So I'm going to make a snowman, and I'm going to make a snowman out of, um, so everything that we're going to be doing is gluten-free, dairy-free. Um, but what I've seen the snowman, and I've actually done this before, I have a snowman that um, I did with a brie and uh, a borsin and another round cheese you put them together and then you make a snowman out of it and then you put a bunch of different little um snacks and stuff which i have to do today but what we're going to do is i decided to do mine totally um dairy free and so if you don't have a wheel cheese or something like that this is the best thing borson has a dairy free cheese uh, it's vegan it's gluten free it's really good it guys. smells just like the borson but I, what i wanted to tell people is there's sometimes like there are things that we can do. Um, if you want to pull something out and use this as um, uh, a kind of a fun um, a shape or something, you use a cu cookie cutter. Or you can just take a cup and you can use the cup and you just press down oh and gosh. pull out. I mean, yes. Let's see, show what you're doing here. No, so, you're fine. Oh, I mean, okay. So you put the, the, the um, force in it. It's going to look a little messy right now, but once you get on the plate, you're just going to take your knife, you're going to put it around like this. And you're going to pull out the um, the shape that you've just done. Um, at home, I actually do this with a kind of a plastic cup. But see how now it's come into that smaller circle? I can, I'm going to make it look a lot prettier, I promise. Um, but that's something that you can do. Um, and that's a way just to get, if you need a shape or you need something. I was going to do a cookie cutter so I can show you because you me, I would have a Mickey Mouse at home. But um, so if you just want to do a little shape, um, you can do it like that. I mean, I know typically you could just pull it out of this um, this Borson container, but um, you know, and then you can just kind of go around the edges and make it a little prettier um, or pretty, pretty it up. Pretty and, I, it up. and I want to show, so I've started with the on D, the on D. dive, I don't know what we're calling yes. it, putting it around the edges here. Um, sorry, my, my camera shot's uh, a little shaky because that's me. Oh, but we, we're getting a lovely picture of your Crocs. Oh, now. my little. Ooh, there, ooh, there are her sound effects. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the other um, shot, and we're getting a little bit of glare there. But let's go back to the other shot because I'm going to put this one down, Traven, so that because I, I can't do both with the. There we go. So I'm just laying down because 
And in the picture that we have, they had like some kind of leafy green. It was just, I, that was the one that I made. It was just romaine. Um, so great. it was just big pieces of romaine. And when we were shopping last night, I was like, oh, let's do something colorful. Yeah. Um, and so that's the turkey's outside feathers, right? So you could, you know, feather it up. And I'm going to put the red ones at the top because that's what I want to do. At home, I usually have a big bowl to throw all my stuff in. So I'm sorry, guys, if you're seeing all the little... I'm going to take yeah, a little if taste. You, if you were looking for Martha Stewart, we're not doing that here. Yeah. Um, and you always say, oh, Rachel's like Martha Stewart. I'm like, mm. But better. <laughs> so this yeah. other, so the next thing I'm doing, um, like I said, you could do the three cheeses. You could also do three dips, and that's what I'm doing today. I'm actually doing the borsin, which can be like a dip, and then I'm going to do this vegan um, feta cheese, and I'm going to use a smaller cup um, to go and get the piece of, of um, feta and uh, get that out. I should be showing. Um, so this one might be, the cheese was a little soft on the borsin. So typically if you did the borsin, it wouldn't crumble like it crumbled earlier. And like I said, if you have like a silicone cup or a plastic cup at home, which is what I usually use, um, you can just pop it out a lot easier. So um, the... <laughs> It's a good time. It's a good time. good time. It's stuck in the glass. It's stuck in the uh, glass, but, but we will be fine. You'll, you'll see it in a minute. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch, I am... Here's what I love about this, you guys. If if you're not making food fun, you're missing an opportunity oh, with your kiddos. For real. Right? And, and this can... Because one of the things that we wanted to talk today about is holiday traditions. Mm -hmm. And how we include our kids in holiday traditions. But also, you know, I don't know how everybody else feels and you say what you want to say Rachel but I remember when my son was first diagnosed with autism that when the holidays rolled around I I couldn't I couldn't just automate the things that I had done before and I got sad about yeah, it yeah right right and I was like oh we're we're not going to have what other people have tradition wise and I loved that I was around people who were a little bit further along the path than I was mm -hmm. who were like make new traditions right and find a way, find what the important part of the tradition is and include him in that. Yep. Like, don't send them to another room while you're decorating no. the tree. If they don't like decorating the tree, then what part of it might they like? Right. So listen, I have a little bit of a, um, especially with the Christmas tree, uh, I like things the way I like things. My son likes to say I have a, a little bit of OCD. He said, <laughs> you, you have, he says, OCD minor. But sometimes major. And um, just because he knows. And this actually started not it, I'm, as I'm just holding some prosciutto here. Um, so what happened with Kobe is that I would start putting something in the same place every time. And this is where it goes. Because for him, creating that habit was what was great for him. So he knows, you know, typically you've got your silverware drawer and you've got your spoons, your forks, your knives. He would put all the spoons in one thing. And I said, Kobe, you know, there's teaspoons and tablespoons. And then we had to go through that. And I said, These, the teaspoons go here. Um, I also made a, on a placemat when, um, when we were, when I was trying to teach him how to set the table, I made one placemat that I, with a Sharpie marker, I said plate, cup, fork, knife. So there's a lot of things in life, like these numbered bags, that I kind of um, had to set up in, in ways to help him be able to succeed and be independent. And it's little steps each time. So some of that kind of, uh, you know, everything goes the same place every time was because I wanted to make sure he um, had access and it was in the same place for him every time too. So. Well, you're one of the most organized people I know. I, on the other hand, like I can come over and organize you. Right. Like I used to do that but for people, but I cannot organize myself. That isn't happening. Right. Um, so is this making you a little OCD the way I'm, I'm not out? even, you know what? <laughs> if I was, <laughs> this is the thing, if I was making it, I would have massive OCD, but because I'm not. Yeah. That, and you're well, going to rock it. I just realized that because a lot of this is green and we have green screen, it's showing up as a different color. That's so, hysterical. I didn't think about that. But I'm going to show this to you. Now, see, here, I told her, no, I'm going to remember from the picture. I said. But it's so good that she numbered things because I put the celery on now. Um, I don't know if you guys can see um, in this shot. I put the celery on. It looks like a hot mess. <laughs> uh, and it, it does look black because of the... That's hysterical because that's of hysterical the green. because of the green. But that's a bunch of celery. It looks like a seafood dish, but it's not. It looks like we're serving black squid. There we go. <laughs> Traven got it there. Yay. So that's what it really looks like. 
and it looks like a hot mess, but I'm going to make it look better. And let me shoot over here so that you can see what Rachel's got going on. It's shaping so up So I've got a little bit of a snowman. Do you want me to do it? Sure. So yeah. I've got a little bit of a snowman here. So we've got hummus on the bottom. We've got the borson, and then we've got the feta cheese. Oh, there's a little piece of lettuce on dive here on the iPad. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking some currants. Uh, I'm going to take a little carrot. I took two pieces of rosemary. I, I, I'm a, I call myself a apartment farmer because I grow some herbs in my windowsill. And so I, I had some fresh rosemary, but you can get something like this at Trader Joe's. And then I had a little pack of currants. This is prosciutto. So the prosciutto is the, the scarf. Can you guys tell he's a snowman? But this is three different things. You've got a vegan feta, you've got the borson, and you've got the hummus. And so this is where my guy's coming. He still needs a nose and a face and a, he's uh, Frosty the Cheese Man. So I'm going to, do I hand this back to you? You can hand it back to me. There you go. And, and let's see Shannon's. And, and I'm continuing with my hot mess, <laughs> but it's getting more colorful the here. The hot mess express. The hot mess express. But, you know, I... Listen, part of the fun, I think, is uh, when it looks a little bit different. In my house, that's what we laugh hysterically over. I, we, I, we love those shows where oh, somebody... Oh, nailed it or whatever. It, and somebody picks a craft and oh. it looks like Snoopy's been oh. punched in the face. That, and, uh, and we can sit and laugh over that. See, I can't that's watch Nailed It. I, I try. Oh, I'm sure. Cause but you because just for me, I'm time. like, oh, no, just, oh, come on, just, just oh. Just shove that over. It, you would know exactly. You should go on that show. Oh, no. And no, because I think the point is, is they're not supposed to be great well, at it, right? I do think that's the enjoyment part for yes. my family is that we laugh hysterically at what somebody thought was the, and I'm not going to do much better here. But you're doing great. Look at it. It's fun, and we're having a good time. And imagine if you're doing this with your children. Right. It normalizes food in a way that just talking about food can't. And, you know, I always like to say here, you teach our kids to eat the rainbow. Yep. And you can't teach them how to eat the rainbow if they're not touching it. Right. And I, you know, I love to take it from gardening. And like you said, you can do it in your apartment. Yep. The, in kindergarten classes, they grow beans. I mean, I do day. that. I, I just... I just interrupted you. How rude am I? No, no. I literally just um, did a huge jar of alfalfa, alfalfa sprouts in my apartment. They were in my windowsill. Um, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. I'm checking my numbers here. I can count. Uh, <laughs> well, and the so, thing is, that's the other thing. It's numbered, but if four goes before you, five, that's okay. Yeah, it is. Life it's goes totally on, okay. Right? It's totally Life good. Um, yeah, you're, you're good to go. I'm having a good time. Are you having a good time? Yeah. So what's your favorite tradition that your family likes to do for Thanksgiving and Christmas, Rachel? Um, so for me, um, I love a turkey. At, at, I, I'm very, this year we said, for uh, I, my family said, well, let's do something different for Thanksgiving. Let's do a roast. And I went, no, <laughs> I have to have a turkey. Right. Not a ham, turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, all of that stuff. Um, on Thanksgiving, I have to watch uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That means Christmas is started. Okay. Even though Christmas starts, season starts November 1st for me. I mean, I've been listening to Christmas music since Christmas in July, but um, for me, I mean, it's true. You, you know it. Like, at, but the thing is, is a Christmas Vacation, I used to watch Elf, um, but that's my Thanksgiving day is after it, a Christmas vacation has to come on. It's my favorite. It makes me laugh. Actually, last night, funny story, um, my son, we were having sushi at home, and he was saying something, but he was turned away, and sometimes he, he um, uh, muffles, muddles, talks, right. you know, we're fast talkers. And I just couldn't say, and I said, I just don't understand what you're saying. And he looked at me, and he was trying to say, Kinoya, which is a sushi place we were at, at in, in Toronto, and we went Kinoya, like like <laughs> the blessing from Christmas Vacation, and he's never done that before. And I laughed for I mean an hour. I laughed till I cried, and he just he was the blessing because he knows that movie so well because we watch it every Thanksgiving. I so, don't know that I watched it in 30 years oh my gosh it's so good you have to so. i am going to task you this year to watch it okay okay all right oh i love your heirloom colored uh, oh so tomatoes. i love these heirloom tomatoes i just pop them like grapes did you get those at trader joe's last I, night i i had these oh i was gonna say i didn't see you pick those up no because oh. i had them uh they look lovely 
I'm just uh, decorating my snowmen. They're sort of green, sort of red. They're very fall colors. Right, which uh, is super fun. Well, in a minute here, I'm going to show you guys, and you're going to go, <laughs> what on earth? I covered it's his so feet. It's so cute. I covered his feet. His feet were down there, and then I covered them. Oh, it's okay. Oh, crap. No. I think he'll I forgive you. i find his feet. Uh, you can't have feet at the bottom. Oops. All right, stop it. Now. I think he will 100% forgive you. I've got it. Um, it's like I'm... I'm going into the turkey's private parts to bring out his feet. Okay. <laughs> like, he just had a pap smear. <laughs> so. I haven't slept. Oh, there goes the snort. I haven't slept in a day. And Shannon says, oh, that's going to be great because we're just going to be giddy. Yeah. She asked me a question earlier, and I just went we, blink, blink, but this blink. Is, this is what we do. We were at the store last night getting this stuff, and my husband was there with us. And I think sometimes he just looks at the two of yep. us like, what on earth? Yep. And... Um, so, uh, can I tell the Bombas story? Of course. So, uh, we're looking at things, and Rachel said, oh, look, they have Bombas. And, um, and she said, oh, but it's the, it's the ones that have dairy in them. And I've never heard of a Bomba, don't know what a Bomba is. Whatever. Uh, I, just I, so you know, Bomba is a, a, it's a peanut butter puffed corn snack. And I said it just like that to Shannon, I said, pointing at the bag, reading exactly what it said. Right. It's a peanut butter puffed corn snack. And but, she went but blink, she blink. But she said it as if we, we have, it was, it was like you were saying, it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like, <laughs> like it's something we all have all the time. She's like, it's a, it's a peanut butter puff uh, with, a, with chocolate on it. It's a bomba. And, and I said, yeah, you're, you're speaking a different language yep. to me. You might as well be speaking Starbucks yep. to me. I have no idea what you're talking about. And then, and so she went, it's a peanut butter. <laughs> because, it, you know, I mean, that's what it is. But I was trying to say to her, I've never heard of such a thing before in all my existence. And then we just started to laugh in the frozen food section. Yep. And, and Jim, <laughs> Shannon's husband, was like, mm hmm Okay. Yep. Sure. They're a little punch drunk here. <laughs> uh, and there was no drinking happening. Um, no. Do you want to show, uh, while I'm finishing sure. mine up, do you want to show yours? Okay. Okay, so that... that Wait, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, did it go there off? There we go. No. Okay. So what I did was, here's my little snowman. He is, um, the top is vegan feta cheese. Should I turn it, if I turn it to this? Okay, wait, I'm going to figure this out, friends. There we go. Oops, now my fingers are there. I am so sorry. I've got to figure, okay, there we go. So... I, what I did was I put um, a bunch of food around it for the dips, right? So you can put crackers and you can put tomatoes and you can put blueberries and nuts. I put the ginormous corn nuts. These are all gluten-free and dairy-free. So you, what I usually do is put this on a big plate and I put all the vegetables that Shannon has over there. Oh, she's D. Are you trying to put eyes on your turkey? I'm putting eyes on my Oh my gosh, you're the and best. It, and it is like... A, a horror story over here. It is American. <laughs> but you can story really right put anything on this tray if you just want vegetables. Um, at when I do it, I usually do things like is that um, garlic you have there. Like no, that's garlic? those are the big, um, the big corn nuts. Oh, so it looks like I have these garlic. Um, these paleo snacks. So I put some of that there. Um, I'll put carrots and celery and everything around them. Um, sometimes I'll actually make a little Christmas tree with broccoli. But this is Mr. Snowman. And uh, there were two little pieces of rosemary, made his face with a little piece of a carrot and blueberries and cranberries, some little currant. So this is my little snowman. You're so my cute. small kitchen big fav flavor um, cooking segment this week is, uh, is Shannon and I making these holiday accoutrements. Is that a word? Accoutrements. No. Okay, I'm going to uh, hand this over to you. Oh, I, I, I have my hands full. You can't hand it over to me just yet. Um, Hang on a second. I got to... That's a cute turkey. It's so cute. You did such a good job. Oh. Um, and, and this is like... She did it right there in front of you guys' eyes. Um, that's like magicness there. And I have a bunch more of cucumbers left. Oh, great. I have extra That's cucumbers. the thing is you can use these. Okay, so the thing that I talked about last week was... Uh, scraps and stuff like that um, and I and or last week last time we last time we all met I talked about saving scraps from vegetables uh, to make broth um, and something like this or a fruit tray that you have the vegetables from this tray you wouldn't use the the um, 
the cucumbers to freeze them. So any anytime I cut vegetables, things like the celery, the carrots, the bell peppers, I don't use zucchini, uh, the tomatoes, I freeze those and I put those in a Ziploc bag in the freezer and then I throw everything um, in a pot, cover it with water, throw in a couple bay leaves and let it cook for a while. Um, and then I look through my icebox to see if there's anything else. Oh, so, that. so what you see on the one side. <laughs> this is Waddle up. <laughs> he's, he's so cute. So on the one side, you see what Rachel oh. did. And here's mine. That's the best. Here's, here's a live shot of mine. Look how good it now, is. Now, I put his Waddle on his head, but apparently it's supposed to go low. Oh, <laughs> but, he's so cute, uh, though. He looks like he had a car accident. But so now what I would love is if you, like, just do what you would do to this to make it to look better. Him? To zhuzh him. Here, let's switch. Because, um, but but how cute is Here. your snowman? I'll switch. Uh, and I love this, the, oh, okay, Sorry. it's heavier than I thought. Okay. Um, but I, so let's talk about this for just a second. Okay. I love the rosemary. Um, little arms, right? Little arms. And that if you put, so, so usually precious. I put him on this tray that the turkey is on. Uh -huh. um, I say usually, I've done them a few times. But um, so then you could put all the vegetables around him. You could even make a Christmas scene. You could do cauliflower on the bottom for rice, and you can do some little broccoli to make a Christmas tree, and carrots and all that stuff. Strawberries. Um, you could do something like that, which is super cute and super fun. Um, you could just do the head of a snowman I with love the face. This. I'm making this. It's um, cute, this right? Year. Because I'll tell you what, um, this is the kind of thing that Jem would just love because he would want to try all three of the right. different dips and the fact that they're all dairy free and gluten free uh, and, and gluten free and fabulousness. And of course, yep. he would want the the, the prosciutto scarf. Right. Um, but I could have sworn those look like um, those. Those Inca corns, look, yes. they look like... Uh, I just call them giant corn nuts. They're Inca corns. But they look like... Garlic. Uh, they look like roasted garlic. Yes. And what is on the other side? Uh, blueberries. Um, the banana chips is a paleo mix that... It's like a little snack that I keep that's just kind of a I want to show these Thrive cause, Market. Cause There's a bunch of different knows. flavors. They're, um, oh, you do Thrive too? I didn't know you did Thrive. I think someone gave those to me a while back and uh, then I just I Thrive. Why started. Why is it not showing that? You have to camera oh, angle it. Fine. Yeah. There we go. So Thrive Market non-GMO paleo snack mix, gluten-free, vegan, grain-free. There we go. Oh, and it's got nuts in it too. I, don't, I think yours is going to look better than mine. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. And this is the this is the Trader Joe's giant Peruvian Inca corn from Trader Joe's. That's what that is. Yes. And then I want to show the little um, the crackers. The crackers are did over here. Did we throw the bag away already? Okay. This is the original. Wait, wait, and if wait. anybody ever has Sunday. questions about gluten-free food and stuff like that from Trader Joe's or from anywhere, just don't hesitate to reach out and, you know, you can message us here in the chat and Shannon can um, respond or you can message us and Shannon can ask me because there's so many things like even just Shannon and I yesterday with the Bomba or we talk about things like that um, about... Um, I had no idea. Yeah, about kind of how, how or what you would use. I just changed him around a little bit. He still looks amazing. <laughs> he looks so much better now than he looked before. But how much fun would that be to do with your kiddos, either one of these, and then you serve it and everybody's yeah. happy and then your child, you get to say, and they helped and your child Well, and the thing, yeah, the thing with all of these, they can dip this in the snowman's hummus. No kidding. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Sounds entirely wrong. <laughs> But that's good. Uh, but, you know, really incredible. And then um, Rachel has uh, gave some other suggestions for other things that you could do. There were two different Christmas trees, too. Yes. So one of the Christmas trees is broccoli. Um, it's just a broccoli Christmas tree. You lay the broccoli down on the platter. And then um, I think I, out of a yellow, uh, yep, there you go, out of a yellow bella, pep bella pepper, yellow bell pepper, I cut out a little star and then did the Christmas lights and then I use some pomegranate seeds, some green beans at the bottom, some cauliflower, and you can. And then I think after, I actually put dips all around this. Like you can put a ranch dip. You can, you can do all that stuff. And they do have vegan ranch. Daya has a vegan ranch. And I know, it's actually, not bad. Um, tra this is. We're just going to do an ad for Trader Joe's today. Trader okay. Joe's dipping sauces. They're garlic. They're vegan oh, tzatziki. Yeah. Tzatziki. Yeah. So, tzatziki. Tzatziki. Did I say tzatziki? I think you're right. um, they have a vegan caramelized onion dip. 
Yeah. Um, it's so good. So they have all these dips. There's and another one. Have you tried the buffalo, the non-chicken buffalo no. ranch vegan one? No. It's really good. That sounds lovely. It's but really they good. have all of these things. And okay, so I keep saying vegan, but I have prosciutto and all this other stuff. Um, there are people obviously who are vegan, but I usually look for vegan cheeses because those are non-dairy cheeses. Right. And it will guarantee, well, for the most part, that they are um, a vegan cheese um, yeah. because... Um, they, you know, vegan, they don't have the dairy. Right. Um, but they have so many options. And somewhere, I know a lot of things aren't accessible. Sometimes Whole Foods or, you know, Erewhon or whatever, you know, that is. But uh, Trader Joe's are a lot of places. Yeah. And Trader Joe's have so many vegan dips and sauces and cheeses uh, that you can get. And again, if you have questions or say, my kid likes this, what's an alternative? Because that's what I've done for the last now 15 years is find an alternative for everything that would be like something that someone that wasn't gluten-free, dairy-free would have. And Kobe chooses, you know, I've, I, we've talked about, he's tried foods, he's still very sick when he eats them. And, and so he realizes like this is how his life is yeah. and he loves it. I mean, he's like, you know. Can, Whereas Jem is now starting to off-road a little bit and, and he, he will, ha if he's out, he'll enjoy a little bit of something. Um, but then he reverts back to the other because he's like, it, it's sort of, um, like how I think most people are with sugar and alcohol. It's like, well, I'm not going to have that at every meal. It's not going to be good for me at every meal, but occasionally I can have it if I have it in moderation. Yeah. So, you know, I can't eat that way. Right. I, I, that's not a possibility for me. So I love these, and now I'm hungry. I just want to snack. You want a celery stick? I'm going to have a, a cucumber. Uh, but this is lovely. This is really, really lovely. So thank you for helping us to do these. And then I had another, I don't know if I sent it to you, Traven, there was another Christmas tree that I think had fruit in it. Oh. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I sent that to you or not. But the truth is you could do it with almost anything. Anything. So this one, yeah. how easy is that? Look, you've got olives, peppers, broccoli, grapes, tomatoes, raspberries, strawberries, um, the cucumbers, and grapes. But you can literally do anything because all the little layers are, and I think for this one what I did after as I put, um, you know, salami and nuts and, um, you know, it's just fun. Actually, same plate. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just so fun. You can do so many variations. If your kids, I know some of our kids don't eat green foods or, or orange foods. You can just say, okay, and, and when it's the shape of a Christmas tree, it's so much fun. Well, and you could really say, you know, depending on what you're working on in your home, but, you know, I remember when we were working on colors. Right. That, that would have been a great time to go to the grocery store, and you don't, that's not when you go to the grocery store when you're in a hurry. You take a little bit of time, and so we went to the grocery store, and I said, okay, we're, we're on a mission. We have to find the, this many colors. Yep. And I didn't even tell him what for, but we have to find these. And then it was a big reveal that what we were going to make with it. And we didn't make anything like this. This would have been more fun. But, you know, you can say, okay, now we have to find something blue. Yeah. yeah. And, and then we go through the whole produce aisle looking for something blue or right. looking for something orange right. or whatever. So I love that. It can be, you know, they can be a part of the buying it. But I, I also love the idea of prepping the whole thing and saying, okay, when we put it together, it's a separate event. Right. And that's so easy. You're going to be cutting the stuff anyway. So you cut it, bag it. And, and yeah. you know, I know some people don't like to use the bags. I was telling Shannon earlier at home, I typically use the silicone um, reusable um, silicone Ziplocs. And I know that's not because we're trying to be environmentally conscious we're trying to do things better these freeze you can wash these in the dishwasher you can also put them in boiling water and let them uh, that's what I do I don't um, I have an apartment so we don't have a dishwasher so I put these in boiling water and let them clean I clean them really well that's but I, I like that you can put them in the freezer um, there's all different brands this one is called stashers and you can get these on Amazon I think you can actually get packs of these now too wow. at Costco um, Costco has a great in like a pack that has all different sizes they have ones like this um, that actually stand up now and they have gallon zipper oh, ones. I want them. Yeah, they have gallon zipper ones and they, so these, this is an older version, but they have ones at the bottom is flat and it comes up and you stand it and you just open it and oh, fill them. Because um, I always need gallon bags. Oh, yeah, and you could just put these in the dishwasher oh. or, like I said, boil them. But these are amazing. I, I freeze everything in them. Actually, this is a big version, gallon version, is what I put all of my scraps in. I keep talking about that. I think I'm going to have to do a video about the, the broth. Off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so this is what I use. Um, I do use, you know, we try to be as, as conscious as we can. 
Yes, sometimes I'm not good. I didn't, I, I gotta confess, I didn't really know about yeah. these. I knew about the wax paper right. stuff that's fabric. Well, do I have the other one? Um, and I don't know why. I just never am someplace where right. I see that. I have another version of these. I, I unfortunately, it's off. The, to the side, but it's just a like a white a white um, bag, and it has a long plastic thing that goes over the top that this seals it. Those aren't my favorite because okay. it's really hard to pull that um, okay. that piece over. I found these easier to manipulate, um, but they're great. And I love if they sell them at Costco. Yeah, I'm not quite. I, I order from Amazon, but I'm not as good at ordering things online as I am at, at picking Costco. things up at Costco. Yeah, Costco, Costco has. A, I just saw it. It was like a big pack, and it was like okay. nineteen dollars. And these aren't cheap. These are a little bit expensive, but the reality is you're not going to be buying Ziplocs and you reuse them, yeah. like reuse them. And I've never, I mean, I've been using this for since pre-pandemic, yeah. Um, and I've never had an issue with it. Um, Amazing. So I do this in glass jars. I do a lot of stuff in that. I do a lot of stuff in glass jars. Ask my husband. Yeah. He's like, you know. Do we need should, another glass jar? Yeah. yeah. He, you know, ball jars. But I have antique ones that right. are blue, and he's like, enough with the ball jars. I just made a broth out of all my, my stuff uh, a couple weeks ago. Had some beautiful antique jars and thought, I'll freeze stuff in it. Oh. Did 10 big jars of broth, mm. and I opened up my freezer the next morning, and I was like, why does it look like there's a muddy mess in there? Mm. And as the broth was freezing, it all um, uh, broke, the jars. broke jars, about half of the jars, beautiful jars. Yeah. But the good thing is, is it, it was already kind of frozen, so it was just like a little weepy seepy in oh. there. But I, and then I thought, oh, well, I'll just defrost it. I'm like, I can't. There's pieces of glass. So I lost half of my broth. Yeah, and your antique jars. Um, yeah, they, with ball jars, they make specific yeah. jars that are for freezing. They're thicker, yeah. and they have, and the key is, is not to... Um, they don't have a shoulder on right. them either. They're straight up yeah. and down. And not to um, fill them too full. They call that and the I, head space. The, yes, the head space. Yeah. And I also have the, the lids. They're not the metal ones. They're a white plastic one. Yeah. Yep, absolutely critical. But a little I bit love of, those. Little tidbit. I love those. So we were talking a little bit about traditions. Uh, so you said what your Thanksgiving oh, tradition yes. is. What's your Christmas tradition? Um, Christmas tradition. I mean, so many things. Right. Um, uh, What's the one that, like, you cannot... It's like not happening if, if it's not that tradition. Everything about Christmas. <laughs> so um, you're like a Hallmark Christmas movie where there's yeah. a list and you got to check mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. all the things. An internal list. I love Christmas Eve. Um, we don't do the like open a gift and then, you know, some people do open a gift and it's PJs. We have been doing matching PJs, but I'm going to tell you, we bought a pair of matching PJs three years ago and we use the same ones. We don't buy new ones every year. Yeah. We, and the dogs have them and it's great. We all just, we're, oh, here's our Christmas. The dogs have yep, matching PJs. Of course That's they hilarious. do. Um, and so we all wear thing. our matching PJs and, you know, we, we sit around my mom's tree and uh, some of us sit on the ground, some of us have little stools and we just... We open the gifts and then, and that's usually right first thing in the morning. And then we have breakfast. Um, Christmas Eve, we do have a meal with family, um, usually making cookies. That's one of the things, um, decorating cookies. I love decorating cookies. Last year, my mom and I decorated gingerbread houses, but we did it after Christmas. Mm. We, we had found some and we were like, do and so it was kind of a pre-New Year's thing. And uh -huh. we decorated um gingerbread houses and that was really really fun it was it you know they were those they have those prepackaged ones now um and i i've actually made a gluten-free um dairy-free uh gingerbread i have a recipe oh to make gosh. gingerbread men but i made a gingerbread house one year for kobe Whew, one time because yeah. i if someone wants that and would like that recipe or like to know how to do it i can walk them through it but it's a lot of work and it was difficult because the it doesn't the cookie doesn't mm, uh Harden. Yeah. Is that the word? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's just not as structurally sound. Is there, are there people who are eating their gingerbread houses? Like, I, even when we ever bought a kit. Traven never, raised his hand over there. I, Traven's <laughs> eating his gingerbread. Because we always would buy the kits and we would never eat them. See, I've never bought the kits. I've always made them. Oh. But then, I mean, well. I like to pick the little things off and, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, we, we would buy the kits with Jem and make them, but we made it like it was a kit like it was Traven did you, you do did you do the one where with the with milk carton and um graham cracker cookies have you ever seen those oh, no. so when i was a kid we took those little mini school um milk, carton milk cartons yeah and then we took graham crackers and you just frosted it to the sides and frosted it to the top and then you decorated i remember like that's what school was oh, for me that was what did you have did you no, ever oh no. did you back in the olden days we and didn't have you that. didn't have graham crackers back uh, then <laughs> no we had graham crackers we, you had to get milk the, the the other right <laughs> 
<laughs> we had to walk <laughs> both ways uphill to do it. In the too. snow, in barefoot. The snow, with potatoes in our shoes. <gasps> I've never uh, heard that. Oh, you I only heard, heard barefoot. Oh, no. The with thing that my grandmother used to say is that when they would go to school in the morning, their mom would have potatoes in the oven, right? And and they would take the potatoes and stick them in their mittens on the way to, 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 oh. to school. And then when you got to school, you'd take your boots off and you would stick your baked potatoes in your boots while you were in class. And then for lunch, you would take the baked potatoes out and that's what you would have for lunch. And they would keep your boots warm so that when you walked home, um, that your boots were supposedly warm. That was the and whole And then thing. you would eat your boot potatoes for lunch. <laughs> for lunch. I love lunch. that. Yes. I mean, we're eating like a turkey and a, a snowman, right, so. Right, right, right. Uh, for us, for Thanksgiving. Yeah, have, what are your traditions? We have weird traditions. For, because my husband often works. And that's just life. And we don't get uh, we don't get precious about that. I hear people go, it's unconstitutional. You can't be working on Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I'm like, that's our life. Yeah. There and, are a lot of people that that's their life. Right. And and that's just our life. So for us, and, and often it's right around my husband's birthday. Um, so sometimes we've had to make a birthday cake and take it to his work to celebrate his birthday with him on Thanksgiving Day. But one of the things that Gem and I started doing on Thanksgiving Day is that in many cities, and especially here in Los Angeles, they have something called Gobble Gobble Give. Oh, right. So that's um, a thing where you sign up to bring either they have people that bake turkeys but we do the side dishes so and we just there's one that we do because we don't eat this anymore um because we could i have made it gluten-free and dairy-free before but my mom had this dish that she would make that was called scallop corn and really what it is is corn pudding oh corn pudding have you seen <laughs> schmigadoon corn pudding corn pudding right, i made i learned it, corn pudding last year right. because of the song and that's really what it is it's corn pudding and, but it's the most decadent, wonderful, warm, comforting thing ever. It, it's not quite cornbread. It's, it's like a little bit loose, but it's, it's, got, it's got corn and cornbread in it <coughs> and sour cream and onion and all these. It's mm. really good. And it's warm, but you can eat it cold. It's pretty fabulous. And it's now, have you made that vegan? I have. Like, can you make it dairy-free? You, you can. Um, it's just, you not know, not necessarily, you know, the thing that I yeah. want to eat, you know, but, um, but you can, I have made it that way. But so what my son and I do, I get up on Thanksgiving morning and I start it and then he'll come down and help me. And we have the parade on in the background. Oh yeah. The parade that is, see now you're saying the things that are yeah. my traditions. The yeah, parade is the parade. a 100%. And we tape the parade cause we're basically in the kitchen, but we tape the parade and then, you know, I have to stick the two ginormous trays of my mother's scallop corn in the oven and it takes an hour to bake. Mm. And during that time, you know, we get ready and get the car all ready because then we take the two enormous trays and we go to Gobble Gobble Give and, and there are people standing there waiting for it that take it and they have an assembly line inside where they scoop all the different things onto plates, they cover them wow. and, with foil and then there are other people there waiting to take things to feed the homeless. Right. So. And you can do it at any phase. And we always say that some year we're going to do the thing where we take the plates and it's never really worked out for us for various and sundry reasons. And they don't say, okay, you have this street. And they say, take these plates and go find. And here in Los Angeles, you don't have to yeah, look far. No. You can find the homeless. And I always love that because I can't do everything, right? But I go to bed on the night of Thanksgiving knowing that there are people all over the city that got my mother's corn pudding mm. in their belly and that they were like, oh, yeah. this is good stuff, you know? So that makes me happy and it's something that we can do together that while we're waiting for my husband to come home from work. So that's that's great. That's one of our biggest traditions for Thanksgiving. It's much like we have the turkey and all that stuff, but it's much more about that now right, right. than it is about the food. And I must admit that we like Black Friday, that we, we do Black Friday sales. Um, I'm and we have gone to the store on Chris, on Thanksgiving night before and participated in all of that. I, I, I have been there when it started to go south. Like there was one time at a Walmart that I was there and Jem was probably five and they, they, the store was open, but they weren't going to release the Black Friday sale. And it was a huge pallet of video games 
that was covered in plastic and there was an employee ready with scissors to break the plastic when it was like 11 o'clock and there were people gathered and I had gem in a shopping cart ready to, you know, take yeah. what, and, and, but then it got more and more people and people started to shove and then two guys started to shove each other and I was the person who said, we are not going to be on the news tomorrow because yep. you couldn't handle, yep. I was like, we are going to behave like human beings, right. my child is here, set an example, yep. I turn into the school mom thing. But, um, but most of the time at Black Friday sales, I've met some of the most wonderful people. Because they're out there doing the same. Line, yeah. and, and you can okay, get wait, great Okay, wait, one deals. year? Yeah. The one year, probably 12 years ago that I did Black Friday, uh -huh. we did it because we wanted a big 52-inch TV. Yeah. It was a third or a fourth of the quarter of the price, and right. it was back when the TVs were $5,000. Right. We'd saved all year for it. And so we stood in line at 11 o'clock at night at Best Buy, and it was supposed to open at 4 or 5 in the morning, thinking we were going to be first. We were like 100th, and there were so many people. <laughs> yeah. But people had tents and had pit yeah. fires. I was shocked, and that was their tradition. Yeah. And some people were bringing um, food and huli huli chicken and stuff yeah. like that. I was like, this is a thing. People had chairs. I'm like, yeah. I don't have chairs. I don't have a blanket. Yeah. How come I have none of this stuff? And I realized this isn't my thing, but yeah. also I thought it was so cool that that's people's tradition. Yeah. And my husband is a bargain shopper and he's good. I'm not good like he is, but he's good. He you knows right where to go in the store to get the thing, get the deal. Um, but I think back to a year when all Jem wanted and he'd worked so hard um, he wanted a computer that he could do VR on. Mm. It, it was like the hot new thing. Um, we, he'd gone with me to Texas for the summer and we toured around and there was a place where they had the VR and I tried it and he was like, Mom, I love this. It's the future. And I could see that it was something that, but it was so much money. The computer just to be able to play VR, then the VR thing was so expensive. So we set up a whole thing and said, you know, here's what you need to do at school. Here's how the next few months have to go. And if you get this, then it wasn't even a Christmas gift. We were like, we will get this for you the week before Christmas. And he did everything. Like there was no way that we weren't going to do it, but it was so much money. And when it came time to Black Friday, they had the computer oh. and it was for like 75% off, mm -hmm. but you had to stand in line. You had to get the deal. And we were like, we're standing in line. We're going to get the deal. And I always have two sturdy lawn chairs in the back of my car, unless something is horribly awry and I've had to take them out. And the guy behind us in line started to feel faint because he got a little hot and whatever. And so you know, my husband went and got the chair and we got, you know, and then he called his son and his son came mm -hmm. over and we hung out with them because we had to wait in line for probably yeah. two hours. You're standing with these people for hours. It's like yeah. me and Disney parades or fireworks or whatever. Right. You know, you those get things to that, know them. Uh -huh, you do. So uh, I, there was w one year when we got new phones at Target at midnight on Thanksgiving and the guy who was in line behind me, we had to wait forever because they were setting up the phones and all this stuff. So probably from midnight to two, we stood in line together and his child had just been diagnosed with autism. Oh. And, uh, and he said to me, oh, you know, I'm going to give you the name of, because I was telling him about the toy guide that we do. And he hooked me up with a company that makes great toys oh. that we've featured many times That's in the guide. Great. So got to know. So, so we kind of like that, I have to say. And the pandemic, it's been different, you mm -hmm. know, because we've ordered things online. Right. Um, but for Christmas traditions, with us, it's a bunch of things. Yeah. But the biggest thing, I think, is, is Christmas Eve. My mom always made oyster stew. Okay. I've never and that, heard of that. I, like, it was the tradition in our family. And, and as kids, we all were like, bleh, yeah. oyster stew. Uh, she would make pies and things for dessert, but dinner was oyster stew mm. and pickles. Mm. And I never liked... Oh, she made the pickles, right. We were talking about yeah, that. But, um, but oyster stew, which is basically milk, butter, and oysters and salt and pepper. I've never... It's, it's like not an exciting thing at all. Was it something that was a family tradition that she passed yes. down? Okay. Yes, from many generations. Okay. And, um, but it's interesting because... What we took from that, because we, we weren't doing milk, I'm allergic to milk, my son was allergic to milk, and when you cook other milks, it's not the best mm. thing. Um, but he loves oysters, mm. and he loves smoked oysters. So Christmas Eve has become like a fish thing for us, because, you know, a right. lot of people do the tradition of the seven fishes. Yeah. We, I grew up having 
an Italian uh, mm. feast. We had the homemade pasta. We had, there were courses. There was the crab legs and the lobster legs right. and all of that stuff. And then we would have the homemade pasta yes. and then and the pasta sauce would be the sausage and the meat and all yeah. that stuff. But it, we, you went through it. The salad always came at the end. Yeah. But yeah, that, that fish was, or those, those crab and that fish, that course was. Love, 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 yeah. love. Love that. So it's a big thing, the oyster thing on Christmas Eve, and we always open one gift on Christmas Eve, and then we don't. There was one year. When Do you have specific gifts that you open, or just you get to choose? I usually pick the gifts okay. because I pick a game, and right. then we play a game right. on Christmas yeah. Eve, and we play games on Christmas Day. Gotcha. And that's and then we laugh hysterically. I miss, though, I will say that when I was a kid, there was always, it was a big you know, we, I was one of three kids. There were a lot of people in the house. We always had neighbors over if we didn't have relatives over. It was a big thing with a lot of people. And my life is not that way anymore. Yeah. It's a very small, it's usually the three of us. Right. Um, and that's a different thing. But I love that our little family gets that time together and that we play yeah. games. And, and the older gem has gotten, the more fun that has gotten. We do that too. We do games as much as we can. My mom's usually working on a puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, we have musical instruments and none of us can play. And so we just do a fake band um, and, and <laughs> like kazoo and the little right. bling, bling, bling. And, you know, Baby Yoda yeah. now sits, Grogo sits on the piano. So we touch him and he goes, oh. And my mom has, a, not a tradition, but one of the things that she has is the little dogs that bark and the little toys that da -da 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 -da, oh. and she has a whole bunch of them on her fireplace That's and awesome. so we go through and it's just it's it's dorky but it's fun and one of the traditions we do too is um we always put cookies and milk out for santa uh -huh. and carrots for the reindeer and um always kobe always writes santa a letter the night before oh, and he lovely. he leaves it there and then um it's just kind of a, a you yeah. know we believe in our house so it's nice i love that yeah. i love that and then, of course, once Christmas comes, I love the week. My favorite thing is the week between Christmas and New Year's because all the rules go out the window. Yep. You eat when you want to. You sleep when you want yep. to. You do what you want to. And we play games every night. And I don't. a lot of times I don't get dressed that week. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Are you a household that keeps your Christmas de decorations up to a certain time? Or do you take it down the next day? Or what is it? Do you have a... For me... I, well, I'll let you answer, then I'll tell you my answer. Well, it used to be, I used to be one of those people that if I got around to taking the Christmas tree down in June, gotcha. I was doing well. Right, right, right. Um, but then, then I got very militant about it all has to come down on New Year's Day or mm. the day before New Year's Day. Really? That it has to all be down. Now, in the last couple of years, I've been much kinder to myself and said, why don't you wait and see how you feel? But it really needs to be down by the 6th of January, or it's an indication that mentally I'm not doing well. Gotcha. Right. I understand. Yeah. I understand. What about you? I am a, it stays until the 6th, at least. I do the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. So it has to, I mean, I also decorate really early. Um, sometimes little things start going away. But for me, as long as I can drag it out, not going to lie, I have had a Valentine's tree before yeah, um, where sure. stuff came down and I just wanted the tree up still. And so I had the tree with lights. And yeah. um, I do have a small uh, fake artificial tree that has lights on it. Mm -hmm. And what I do is as I get the Christmas cards, the Christmas cards go, and that goes on oh. the dining room table. The Christmas cards go on that. I've had, I also have little elves that hold Christmas cards, but the tree is kind of fun because um, they just go on and it's a way to decorate the tree with all the cards. And I know, like, I think that's something we need to start doing again. Um, I, you know, those, getting those Christmas cards and, and even just a personal letter. And I know it's a lot of work and, you know, it is stamps are money and cards are money, but there's something about getting a Christmas card yeah. that someone remembered you and they took the time and look, listen, even if it's from, I don't know what minted or one of those things where you just input the stuff, they still thought to click your button, um, and, or check your name off or whatever it is. I mean, a I got a handwritten card, several of them last year that people wrote them, their yeah. kids did art, um, different things. And I actually, I love to take pictures of families and a lot of people send me their cards because the pictures I've taken of them, I'm not oh. professional. I just do it cause I'm crazy. And, um, I, a lot of people, their Christmas cards, their, it's, it's the, the pictures that I've it. taken and I always feel like, oh, I have a family memory with oh, them yeah. and I love seeing it, but I love seeing those Christmas cards. And then what I do every year is I put the Christmas cards. I used to have this snowman that lived, it, he had little pouches um, uh -huh. and the cards would go in there, but then you couldn't see him through the year. But I go through those um, and something that my grandmother did, uh, my, my paternal grandmother did when I was probably 20 
is she took all the, she kept Christmas cards, she had a box. She kept every Christmas card and every letter and everything she ever, wow. ever did. And one year, for about a year, she went through them and organized them. And she would, whatever cards you sent for 10, 20 years, 30 mm -hmm. years, she put those together, put them in an envelope, wrote a handwritten note, and send those to the people. Uh -huh. And so many back in the day when people would write those letters or personal letters or even memories of the kids or a photo they sent, and people said, you know, it's a little different now with social media and or, I mean, I have 6,000, 60,000, no, 70,000 pictures on my phone. Right. But to see those moments, I still have some of those. She would keep little, you know, when I draw something at, um, at a restaurant, uh -huh. or she would do I said, I don't even remember this. That's what, and I said, I love you, Grandma Rachel. Right. And so she sent that because she kept all wow. of these memories in a box. And all these people, I mean, there were people that had been gone, people who lost kids and family members, husbands, wives. And to have those yeah. memories again was so cool. So I've kind of done that. That's great. Um, and just kept those. And whether I send them or not, and sometimes I'll go through them and I'll be like, nope, nope. <laughs> No, I didn't say well, that. Well, can I tell you, I'm in, an, I'm in the complete opposite camp that I um, stopped maybe 12 years ago and said every year I would beat myself up because I, I'm not capable of sending yeah. Christmas cards. Yeah. I can't, like, I, like, the number of steps and to get it done and to get it organized and get that, I can't do it. Yeah. I literally can't do it. And I just said, I'm not going to do it. And I decided to make a video Christmas card every year that then I would send to people, but then I just would post it and put the link on Facebook and go, here's our video Christmas card. And, and I would put a whole thing about, you know, we save this many trees by doing this. And I think people thought I was anti-Christmas card, so we don't get Christmas cards oh, anymore. No. Go, oh, no. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. militant about that. And I wasn't. I just, I... Couldn't do it. The executive function yeah. thing to go through. I, and I would beat myself up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would end up, I would buy the Christmas cards. I would do all the writing, whatever. I couldn't. Get them the to the post office, could, yeah. And then, I mean, oh, don't even get my niece ta yeah. started talking about me going to the post office. Oh, you and I, I are the I, same with that. We have, I we both have it. a post office phobia. Uh, totally. Or, like, I will have boxes sitting at my front door. Oh. And, or even, I have packing stuff in my car. But because a lady yelled at me once, I and I just, uh, there is a good post office somewhere near yeah. that, but it's really, really, I can't do it. I can't do it. And so sometimes I would send Christmas cards in June, yeah. in July, because that's when I had the time yeah. to do it. But even then, it was so much anxiety and angst for me that I just said, I'm, not, I'm never sending a Christmas card again. Yeah. Um, and I enjoy putting together the, and what I love is that then our yearly Christmas cards have been sort of like a record yeah. for us right. about, you know, uh, what was going on that year. And I really enjoy doing that but I think I think last year I didn't even get that done yeah. and there's listen that's the thing there even yeah, I've I've stuff. done I've sent my cards at, at, at I said I had a Thanksgiving I'm not a Thanksgiving a Valentine's card I've had it um you know spring Easter and it was Christmas and I'm like yeah. hey this is here um I found cards in my uh Christmas stuff from the year before we've all had that happen I get it don't pressure yourself that's the thing if you can do uh an e-card or you can just do a Facebook post Oh. Because that's the least thing you have to worry about. I know I just love getting cards because it's just a moment. And that moment that, like, even if it we're not good. together, it's a, it and I good. know that someone remembered our family in yes. that time. Um, and some people, I don't hear anything from them except for that Christmas card. Yeah, absolutely. I do love the e-card thing, though, too. And I love, uh, I think it's American greeting cards that you can... You can purchase, I have a friend who does this every year. She purchases the, the membership for the year. And I think it was last year, the year before, she sent me a birthday card and it was Donny Osmond singing to me. Oh. It, it's not, it looks like cameo. Yeah. And what he does is he just records a bunch of yeah. names. Yeah. I watched it probably 108 times, rolled around on the floor laughing yeah. and just, you know, like, peeing yep. because it was I was and and my husband he was like what are you watching yep. I was like Donny Osmond is singing to me and he's like ha, ha, and Merry Christmas Shannon and Merry exactly, Christmas Shannon but right it, but yeah. it flowed like you'd never know that that's yeah. what he was doing but he's like Shannon you're fabulous oh. Shannon and he's doing this whole song and dance stuff and I was like I, no I feel special life right is, now life is I good. feel sparkly Donny Osmond yeah. just sang to me. I love that. Um, it's a really, it's a really, really fabulous thing. So I think all those things, anytime you can show somebody that you care about them, whichever way that you do it. Yes. I have no idea, Traven, how much time we have left because I, I, I'm not keeping track of the time. So like hold fingers up at some point. But I also, we were going to talk, did he say one? There's one minute left? Oh, you're kidding. 
Okay, at some point, we're next month, we're going to talk about the fact that we're parents of adults. Yeah. And that it's its own thing. I think uh, next month's a perfect month to do it. Yeah, yeah. during December. Wait, I, I have a question for you. Yes. What are you thankful for this month? Oh, well, Because it is Thanksgiving. So I, we, you know. I'm going to start with, because you're closest to me, that I'm thankful for our friendship, yes. which has meant so much to me. And I even said to, to Jim when we got into the car last night to leave, it's pouring rain. We got in the car to leave at Trader Joe's, and I said, Oh my gosh, I love that Rachel and I always find a reason to laugh. Oh, I mean. I mean, and, and like belly laugh, yeah. like hysterical, like almost topple into the frozen food section. But of course, I'm grateful for Traven. I don't know what I would have done without Traven starting, you know, with this new studio. Could not have done anything close to this without Traven. Um, I'm thankful for my husband and my kid and for our collective health. Um, I'm thankful for all of our viewers who've hung with us through a very weird, interesting transition year. Yeah. Uh, I'm grateful for all the people that, that watch and all of the people on the spectrum who've helped us launch Stories from the Spectrum. Um, I, I'm certainly grateful for Dr. Graham Pichet because we could not have done any of this without her either. Mm. I'm grateful for your kid who's fabulous. <laughs> Uh, we didn't really get to talk about the All Ghouls Gala, and he won an award there, but he's a wonderful addition in my life. And for all the people in the community, that yeah. I, my life is so rich with people from the autism community on the spectrum and the people who love them. And I never would have known any of those people right. had this journey not taken me and right. my son and my husband where it took us. So that's part of what I'm thankful for. What are you thankful for? I mean... I can't with that. <laughs> We're out. Bye, guys. No. Um, well, I am thankful for you, of course, and I'm thankful for um, Autism Live and for ACT and for everything and Anna and my son getting the award. Uh, it was a Lending Your Voice Award, and it was just really neat for him and, and for him to feel special and elevated in a way because sometimes with our kiddos, especially because there's no f physical attributes because of their disability or their different ability, um, it can be really hard mm. um, because there aren't things that are indicators just walking yeah. by them. Yeah. Um, and so I think for him that was really, really special. So that I'm thankful for that. Mm. I'm thankful for Christmas. <laughs> Guys. Duh. Duh. Um, and I'm thankful for my whole family. Right. Yeah. And Disney. I'm obviously Disney and you. Everything that Shannon said, plus Disney and Christmas and, you know. Um, no, but I, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a thankful time of year, but um, I'm thankful for your turkey. I mean, look at this. Look at I'm, this turkey. I'm, I'm thankful. I tried the, the hummus and the hummus oh, see? was great. Uh, uh, so amazing. We hope that you guys enjoyed this. If there are things that you want us to try, <laughs> there's something you want us to make and you want to see how Rachel makes it and I fluff it. <gasps> yes, let's do that. Send us suggestions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, so write, write in and tell Wait, us. Wait, I just you're... realized one of the turkey's feet was up at his I didn't put them back. His on... shoulder. I took them. I did the pap smear and I didn't put them back. <laughs> so they're pap sticking smear. out of his. Out of... Yes. I He's had... just doing a little whoop. <laughs> <laughs> He's kicking up his feet. It's uh, it's symbolic. I love it. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for coming in thank and doing you. all this. Has been great fun. So much fun. And we hope that all of you will join us tomorrow for stories from the spectrum. We have a new one that's coming up. I hope a week from now. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Um, because it takes a while to, you know, coordinate everything. Because folks make us the video and then we have to like smush them together. But uh, we will see you live back in the studio on Monday. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you, too. Bye-bye for now. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much. See you next time.